Master Grade Strike Rouge Otori. Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert184, 2Rs2Bs, GundamReviews.net, here to take a look at the completed parts for the Master Grade Strike Rouge version remaster 2.0 equivalent. Let's focus a little bit on the colors, but of course, it's going to be that exciting Otori backpack that is going to garner most of our attention. The empty plates are going to be leading to this, the body as you'd expect, nicely color swap there. There's the weapons with lots of extra manipulators down there, armored Schneiders and the regular strike gear. But of course, all the focus is going to be here on the Big Bird Otori. You've got a little tiny Kagali down there, some underwing weapons, and you're also going to have some stands and variations. These markers came in a lot of handy for the lining. I was sort of inconsistent throughout. Sometimes I use gray, sometimes brown, sometimes this, but they're great at cleaning up the flash marks. The seals, everybody's going to have a different take here. I didn't use any of the decals, but if you take a look over there, I did use just the lion's head there with the rose on the inside. I didn't go for the big 210. It looks like the old MG always had the 210 on here. The new one tends to do without it. And for these ones, if you take a look at it, you'll see that I was really not filled with any sort of confidence with these whatsoever. Just in a few days, you can see how they've just peeled up on their own. So what are the odds of them actually staying attached? Well, let's see how it looks without them. And of course, if you want to paint it up, you know that it would be a lot better. And they really did a better job than the real grade of getting these plates properly designed. You're not going to have a lot of wasted parts, but some of them could provide for some interesting color variations if you wanted to go swap them on to Kira's regular strike. For posability, don't forget to check out my review of the Master Grade Remastered Strike, the 2.0 equivalent. But in terms of color swaps, what do we have? Well, that pink looks fantastic in the right light, and you'll see that I went with mostly red real touch marking here, and the red from the original Strike is this nice light pink. Which doesn't look so hot here on the back of the armor, but it's interesting to see some of these came on much later plates. I think the gray there was from the end plate. So it's sort of cool that they were really thinking ahead with this. Armored Schneiders can get stowed, but the real plus of these kinds of things is that you're getting so much gray showing through. The Strikes Blue becomes this much darker red, a little bit of purple maroon in there. You can see more red lining, there's a little tiny Kagali inside, and again, some of these gray parts came on the later plates, so you are going to have some wastage when you go look at the earlier plates that are just going to be thrown out. Yes, Princess, she of decisive words on the battlefield, and decisively standing behind Kira. Anyway, you've got Orb with the White Lion and the Rose looking good. Though I prefer moving MG hands, it's always great that they are going to be giving you lots to swap out here. Really though, three finger trigger figure split, is that too much to ask for on an 18-19 meter Gundam? More red lining, but again, it's the grey that pokes through that's the star. And it's not a straight color swap, as this would have been yellow on the original strike, but it's going to be going into that same color that's on the upper part of the chest. Good machinery underneath. With the armored Schneiders looking poor, unless you want to go take the time to paint them up in silver, and the beam rifle still got a nice lot of details in it there, as you can see in a green seal. That's over a clear part that you could paint up properly. But on to the new and good stuff. Is there any cooler words in the English language than anti Ship sword, yes, just let that sink in there. If you haven't already over the last decade, nice white tip down here, that light blue is going to be very cool, and it's really going to stand out against the pink on the body. The fact that you've got this beam, it looks good there, top and bottom, as it's got some little splayed edges, and I think the fact that they put on another touch of that purple there is just going to help it blend in with the rest of the kit, and help set it apart from Impulse and the original Strike. And what's not to love about a big missile over your shoulder? Well, what are you getting with this missile launcher? First of all, this is the attachment point, and it works quite well. You'll see in a moment with the Otori pack. You've got the two white parts there at the back and on the front. If you did want to actually go launch it, well, it's going to look pretty silly there, as it just comes off pretty easily. Lining opportunities, though, it's going to look good, though. The fact that they at least differentiated it with two colors, you wouldn't expect anything less, though, with an MG. And for the right hips, well, beam launchers. Lots of fun, F91, and lots of others have had under the hip or beside the hip weapons. And I've seen them done well, and I've seen them done poorly, and these ones are probably going to go somewhat under the poorly category. And that's mostly because this is going to be your first introduction when you're putting it together, well, depending on the order you do it, of the seals. And you'll notice that they're just on this black part just laying flat, and where there's a white part of actual plastic, you're not going to be able to put the seal up beside it. The thing about painting this, though, is that they don't actually give you any lines to differentiate this. So you'd have to just tape it off yourself, make sure your, your tape was straight, 
And then because it's on black, you'd have to get the white on there very nicely with a base coat before you get the yellow. So it's the kind of thing where adding it on looks good here, but it made me not want to do it for the yellow parts on the backpack. As you can see, it's not even going to be going all the way through. However, the movement part does look good, but this is just too reminiscent of old school freedoms and not the kind of thing you want to see on Master Grades in 2013. But if you're not happy with the beam launcher, well, you can say only my railgun. And first of all, you saw from the unbox, I didn't even notice from the concept art that they were actually going to be differentiating these. So that sets it apart from Freedom and Strike Freedom and F-91 and everything else that has hip and waist weapons. It's just a lot of fun to do this. And besides, railguns, just a lot of fun. Nice and easy here. You'll notice that they both have that touch of the purple piece of plastic on the back. No seals there, so it is going to be pretty gray and dull, including up at the front. But some lining opportunities and a good, good, again, good movement. Hopefully that's going to work. And forget you, Ale Striker Pack. Yes, this is going to be a lot of fun. Actually, the front of this is going to be looking pretty good. I'm impressed. They've got this black part here in the middle. Gray for the cockpit down there. Some lining on the inside. But those nice little red touches actually make this look like more than just a regular ugly generic seeker nose, which we've seen many times in Gundam. And on the back, you're going to have this moving tail here done up in gray with some lining and a white piece. And you'll notice that you're going to be putting the wings in there. And you've got these parts as well, which are going to sit down in terms of landing gear. But for the actual transformation, you'll notice that that's going to stick down and then go and get ready to plug into the back. So how about the wings? Well, I'm actually pretty happy with them. You'll see that they're going to be on ball joints there and on the front. When you look at this, to me, I see four colors in short order. So for me, even without the yellow, I'm actually pretty impressed with the way this looks. This is going to be sitting on an interesting angle and it's going to bend forward at an interesting angle. So don't expect it to sit all the way in the back there. But these grills look good, but I'm really impressed with the way that you put this part on. It covers up the black, you expose a couple parts of white. So that's a lot of fun with some really big channels here for lining. So you're gonna, you'll notice that some of mine are already fading and I don't top coat, although I should, and that would make a much better job of it. So what are you gonna do if you open them up? You'll notice that they are gonna sit at set different or set distances there. They're just not gonna have a click or anything, but they're not gonna move it on the inside. You'll notice that the lining again is just, it's a little bit too wide. So if you wanna go in there properly and paint it, I'm sure you could. But hopefully you can make it out there that there is a little bit of help if you want to go and tape this off and actually do it up properly painted in yellow as opposed to just going on with the seals. But like I said, for me, they're moving very well. I like the way the lining works for the most part. I'm a big fan of those top and bottom. And when you combine it with the underneath weapons, I'm pretty happy. But if you added that fifth color, you know it would have even more oomph. But this one, oomphy enough. Uh, but it's Valkyrie flashback time here. What are we going to be getting? Well, we've got some drop tanks, and if you take a look at what Bandai's telling you to do, you're supposed to put them on the inside, but you'll notice that once you've got these folded up, and it's actually attached onto the Gundam, that you're hardly going to see them, and as they are a little bit larger, I just have the feeling that I'm going to move them to the outer position. But the small missiles here, lots of lining. You've got two, and then you attach a third one onto there. So if you get them all lined up, this is going to add already even more weapons to a very tricked out IWSP rival here. Looking pretty cool. With more to add. And in better than Sky Grasper style, you'll take a look here. You can get the big sword on there, and you can go and take this and attach that on for a final arm to the teeth backpack. Is this worth buying in Master Grade if you're not that excited about the pilot and its animation or what it actually did in the anime? Well, my quick answer before actually assembling the MS is going to be yes, by itself. The build of this was just a ton of fun. Uh, building the body, of course, is going to be a repeat. How many times? Five times we've already seen this, the, the frame for the seed kits. But that doesn't mean it's a bad thing, putting it all together. But this here, like I said, the four colors in short order, you can count five if you've got the blue there, and the translucent pink, go for six, which it really shouldn't be actually equipped if it's going to be attached onto the back. Nonetheless, it's a lot of fun. The wings work well. The guns seem to be swiveling very well there. And these are easy to attach and detach. And you can actually imagine this being a Sky Grasper-esque plane flying around and attaching onto the back in the atmosphere or in space. And it just makes me want to put it onto the back of both the Strike Rouge and the regular Strike. 
So stick around, everybody, to see that, and please let me know what you think of the parts, the weapons, and the colors so far. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. I know something more fearsome than the name Anti-Ship Sword. Kalita